Hi, Phil Play from BadAstronomy.com here. By now you've probably heard about the U.S. spy satellite that the government is going to shoot down with a naval missile. Uh, there's a lot of facts that we know about what's going on here, and there's a lot of speculation. And what I'm making this video for is to actually put some of the facts out there, give you some links to some places that have the actual facts, and also to give you my opinion about some of the stuff that's going on here so that you can separate truth from rumor. Now what we know is that the satellite is called USA-193. It's a National Reconnaissance Office spy satellite, basically. This is the intelligence arm of the government. And so this satellite was designed to spy on people. Now, that sounds bad, but in fact, there are people who don't like the US government, oddly enough. And so it's probably a good idea to keep track of what these folks are doing. Good intelligence tends to prevent wars and prevent violence. So good intelligence is important. So in fact, I actually support these efforts to actually spy on people. Well, the problem is, since the satellite was launched, it was not able to be controlled. And that means that once it re-enters, we don't know where it's going to re-enter. It could be over a populated area or something like that. Chances are, since the Earth is mostly covered in water, it's going to re-enter over an ocean, probably the Pacific Ocean, because that's vast, it's so big. But you don't know. And the other problem is that the fuel that is on board this thing is called hydrazine. It's like ammonia, and it's, it's noxious. It's, a, it's evil stuff. You don't want this stuff falling intact. There's a ton of it on board this, this thing. And if it falls to the ground, it could disperse in a cloud and, and hurt people. Now, the interesting thing here is that the government is saying that they want to basically blow this thing up because of this fuel. Now, that's, what, that's a fact. That's what they're claiming. My opinion here is that really, you know, this thing is speculated to be a test bed for advanced technology. So probably they also want to blow it up to keep this stuff from getting into the hands of bad guys. We don't want this thing falling into, you know, China or somebody else who doesn't necessarily love America that much. So, you know, blowing it up is, is a good idea. And from an intelligence standpoint, I think, I think that's probably true. Blowing it up because of the hydrazine, you know, why not? Sure, that's a good idea. The, the thing that makes me say that the government's not telling us everything about this and they want to blow it up because they don't want the technology to, to be free is because satellites like this re-enter actually relatively often. There are a couple of times a year that we get big satellites. This one is the size of a school bus and weighs four tons. And that happens several times a year. And rocket boosters this big fall constantly. So 50 or 60 of these things fall to the, uh, to the ground a year. Now these do fall intact. You can easily find pictures of these things lying on the ground. It's actually kind of scary to think that something that weighs several tons can fall from the sky at hundreds of miles an hour and slam into the ground. So in that case, blowing it up again is a good idea. But, you know, it is a spy satellite, so there's probably a little more to the story. It's probably not because it has aliens or anything like that. But, you know, the government does have secrets, and so keeping them from getting into the bad guy's hands is probably not a bad idea. Well, why is this thing re-entering? Well, let me tell you something about space. It's not a perfect vacuum. The Earth's atmosphere doesn't just stop like the beach stops and the ocean starts. It, it, it sort of peters out. It, it fades away as you get higher off the Earth. So if you have the surface of the Earth here, the atmosphere is thickest right at the surface, and it gets thinner as you get up higher. Now, you know this. But even a couple of hundred miles up, where there are a lot of satellites and where the shuttle orbits, for example, uh, the air there isn't a perfect vacuum. I mean, I mean, space isn't a perfect vacuum. There is some air there. Now, I don't have a model of a satellite, unfortunately, but I do have Patrick Starr from SpongeBob SquarePants, so he'll be our satellite. As a satellite's orbiting the Earth, basically its speed is what keeps it orbiting. It's orbiting at several miles per second. It, really, it's more complicated than that, but it sort of boils down to speed. As these things are orbiting the Earth, there is a little bit of air up there, so there's a little bit of air resistance. It's drag. It's the same thing that slows a skydiver when, when it jumps out of, a, out of an airplane. And so, as the satellite orbits in this extremely thin air, its orbit slows. And as it gets slower, the orbit gets lower. So very slowly, that satellite spirals in until the air gets so thick that it basically uh, rips the satellite apart. The problem is, fuel tanks are big and lightweight, and so they have a lot of drag, and so they tend to slow down very rapidly, and that means they can fall to the ground intact because they don't burn up. And so that's really important. It's important to blow, blow something like this up so that the noxious chemical doesn't get to the Earth. So the U.S. government is going to send a Navy cruiser out into the middle of the ocean someplace, and they're going to launch a missile up, and they're going to blow the satellite up. 
Now, something like this happened in 2007. The Chinese did something similar, and, and people are comparing these two things, and, and really, that's not fair. What the Chinese did was, was really kind of evil. It was very bad. They had a satellite that was designed to attack other satellites. It would get near them and blow up and damage the second satellite, so they could blow up, for example, an American satellite this way. In 2007, they did a test of this. They did it 500 miles above the Earth's surface, and they blew up a satellite, which sent thousands of pieces of debris all over this volume of space. And, and this is basically satellite Grand Central Station. There are satellites whizzing through that volume of space all the time. So what they did really endangered a lot of satellites from a lot of different countries. So this was an incredibly stupid thing for them to do. And they were doing it just basically to saber rattle, just to say, look what we can do. Well, what's happening in this case with the U.S. satellite is that this thing is coming in. It is going to disintegrate in the Earth's atmosphere. We do want to blow it up before it does it because it does have that hydrazine on it, and we certainly don't want the technology to, to go into somebody's laboratory where they can study it. So this is going to be blown up when it's much lower. This thing's only going to be about 150 or so miles above the Earth's surface when they blow it up. So it's not going to endanger any other satellites. The debris won't get spread out where other satellites will plow through it. So this is not nearly the evil thing that the Chinese did. So is maybe the U.S. government sort of baring their teeth, saber rattling and saying, look, we can do this too? Maybe. It wouldn't surprise me if that's playing into this as well. We don't know. But it certainly can't hurt if the U.S. blows up this satellite to show other countries that we can do this as well. It's sort of a, a low Earth orbit arms race, I guess. But you know what? We know that people have the capability to do this. We know the Chinese did this specifically to put the fear of God into other people. And so having the Americans do this too may actually rein them in a little bit. Now another interesting rumor about this is that they're going to blow this satellite up during the lunar eclipse that's going to happen Wednesday night. Now in fact that makes sense because if you're going to send a missile up into space and blow up a satellite, you want to be able to track it with telescopes and make sure that you've hit it and that you've done a lot of damage to the satellite, you've really blown it up. The moon is full right now, or just about, so it's very bright and it lights up the sky and it makes faint objects hard to see. So if they wait and do this during the eclipse, that's perfect. It's just, it's a great time to do it. The moon will be much darker, they'll be able to see faint stuff, and it turns out the satellite will be passing over uh, the middle of the Pacific Ocean right at that time where it's very dark. And it turns out the government has issued a warning telling people to stay away from a big area of the Pacific Ocean at that time that the satellite's passing overhead during the eclipse. So it seems like that's the time they're going to try this. Nobody knows for sure. We will certainly know uh, after the lunar eclipse and if the U.S. government did in fact launch this missile and blow it up because it'll be all over the blogs. I'll write about that too as, as soon as I find out. So to recap, here's what we know. USA-193 is a satellite that is out of control. It'll do an uncontrolled re-entry unless we do something about it. It has hydrogen, hydrogen fuel on it, which is toxic, so they're going to try to blow this thing up. We don't know when. People are guessing it'll be Wednesday night during the full lunar eclipse. This is a good idea to prevent debris and the fuel from falling on a populated area, potentially, or to let the technology get into the hands of the bad guys. So all in all, this is probably all a good thing that, that this is being done. It's going to cost 40 to 60 million dollars, which sounds like a lot, but in the defense budget, that's like what they spend on snacks for one day. So it's really not that much, and it's, it's probably worth it to see this getting done. That's my opinion. My name's Phil Plate for BadAstronomy.com. Thanks for watching.